<clears throat> Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's February the 16th today and we're looking at Mark and chapter 4. Now Mark chapter 4 is the beginning of a new era in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. In the previous passage we noted that the religious leaders had declared that the Lord Jesus was casting out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And the Lord Jesus explained that this is blasphemy. It's not blasphemy of him. It's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, who is the active person in the life of Christ. And so, <clears throat> in chapter 4, the Lord goes down by the, um, by the seaside, by the Galilee, and he gathers um, unto him there a great multitude, and he enters onto a ship, a small ship, and he sits in it, and the whole multitude is on the land, on the beach. He has a, a great sort of auditorium, you might say, a great... Um, opportunity we've got tears of people going up the beach and the Lord Jesus sits in his pulpit um, in the boat <coughs> and he begins now to teach them many things but now his ministry changes now he's going to start using parables a parable is a story in the past tense which is laid aside truth to illustrate it for those that can see it but for those that can't see it for those that have no spiritual discernment it will obscure his teaching and the Lord explains that he begins he says behold there went a sower to sow and it came to pass as he sowed some some seed fell on the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up and some fell on the stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth and when the sun was up it was scorched and because it had no root it withered away and some fell amongst thorns and the thorns grew up and, it, and choked it and it yielded no fruit and others fell on good ground and did yield fruit which sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty some sixty and some a hundred and he said unto them he that hath ears to hear let him hear now this is a key phrase it's used throughout the ministry of the Lord Jesus and what he's saying is this he's saying if you can hear me then hear me <clears throat> this is a key phrase that's used by the Lord Jesus to his ancient people it begins at this particular time in his ministry and the reason why he uses that phrase is because there are many in his nation that would not listen to him they didn't have ears to hear and so his call is he that hath ears to hear let him hear you'll notice that this phrase is again used in the book of Revelation where Christ is speaking to seven assemblies or seven synagogues we would call them today seven synagogues of Asia Minor and each time he says he that has ears to hear let him hear and that's what links those seven churches to this ministry here now when he was alone <clears throat> those that were with him with the twelve asked him about the parable and he said unto the he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God so Christ has been speaking in this parable about the coming messianic kingdom all of his parables are in reference to the messianic kingdom all of them they're not about the church they're not about Christians they're about the coming kingdom all of Christ's ministry focuses upon the coming kingdom <clears throat> and Christ says it's given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God now the word mystery in the Bible it doesn't mean something ghostly or mysterious or sinister 
It just means something which is now revealed to certain people something which previously was hidden from them but which is now being revealed and the Lord Jesus is <clears throat> as it were opening the treasure box of the teachings in relation to the coming messianic kingdom and he's going to bring out of the treasure box um, all of the individual teachings about this coming kingdom and he's going to do it through the means of stories which are laid alongside the truth to illustrate it so that's why we have these parables <clears throat> however as well as saying unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God he says but unto them that are without for those that don't know it all these things are done in parables you see the parables shut out those that don't believe and they include and illustrate the truth of God to those that do believe and that's why Christ says he that has ears to hear then let him hear <clears throat> now why does God shut them out so that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven you see once these men these wicked wicked men had blasphemed the Holy Spirit the Lord Jesus doesn't want them at a later time at a later time to hear the gospel of the kingdom and believe it and be saved now that's quite strange isn't it we're not used to hearing an explanation like this but that's exactly what Christ is saying he says that seeing they may see and not perceive so they hear the miracle sorry they hear the parable and they like the story but they don't understand its message they hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven you see <clears throat> now they have rejected the Holy Spirit's work in the life of Christ Christ doesn't want them now in the future to be converted he wants them to be held to that position that they've made this is why when we get into the book of Hebrews he says those that reject the message having been enlightened by it once those who reject the message there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin they cannot be recovered God will not allow them to be recovered they must then having rejected the Lord Jesus and of course in the book of Hebrews we're describing another generation that also will reject the Lord Jesus and reject the the message of the Apostles once they reject the Holy Spirit in the life of Christ or in the life of the Apostles there can be no more recovery from that position <clears throat> and then he explains the parable to them from verse 13 onwards he says do you not know these parables then how will you know all the parables he says the sower sows the word what is the word the word there it's interesting that in the Bible the word word doesn't mean the Bible in the Bible the word for the Bible is the word scriptures it is the script it's the handwritten thing in the Bible the word word always means the prophetic word it means the spoken word he says the sower sows the word he's a preacher of the gospel and in this particular context it is the gospel of the coming kingdom that's what's being preached <clears throat> those by the wayside are those where the word is sown and when they hear it Satan comes immediately and takes the word that is sown in their hearts and then there's those that are sown that where the word is sown on the stony ground who when they hear the word immediately they receive it with gladness but there's no root in themselves and so they only endure for a little time and then afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the world's sake immediately they are offended 
um, <clears throat> and there are those which are sown um, they hear the word but the um, but but they're sown amongst thorns the message is sown amongst thorns and they hear the word but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things enters in and it chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful and then those which are sown on the good ground are such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit 30 60 and a hundred fold and you say well why the four different types of soil now I'm going to suggest something you may not have heard before it's something that fits very well with this passage it's something that I've mentioned before I mentioned this in Matthew I think that what the Lord Jesus is describing here is four stages of the preaching of the kingdom of heaven in the lifetime of John the Baptist he preached repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and what happened well <clears throat> Satan swooped in and took away the word John's ministry was initially very very successful but it wasn't as successful as it could be there was satanic opposition to John and he was unable he never performed any miracles he never cast out any demons in the ministry of the Lord Jesus we find that when the word was preached then it was also very very successful there were thousands upon thousands upon thousands that heard the word and responded however I think that in the ministry of the Lord Jesus it was shallow soil and yes it bore fruit sorry yes it it it, it germinated and it grew however there was no depth and <clears throat> right at the very end of the ministry of the Lord Jesus we find very few very few are still hanging on to the word of Christ you see the Sun arose and persecution came and people realized that the persecution of the religious leaders would cause them to be excommunicated in large numbers and so they they perished in the word now the fourth one I would the third one I would suggest is the ministry of the Apostles and we see this in the life of the Apostle Paul he went out and his ministry was very very successful however <clears throat> there were the thorns that were sown with it and everywhere where Paul went the Judaizers followed him and they perverted the those that heard the word and the result was that they were choked in their in their profession and so they fell away and the fourth type of soil I suggest that's way in the future that's after the church age and that's when the 144,000 evangelists evangelize the world with the gospel of the kingdom and when they do so they will be incredibly successful there will be no opposition there will be no shallow soil there will be no thorns they will be 100 percent successful so there's a suggestion for you i think that this fits very well with this don't forget this is about this is a parable of the kingdom it's the first parable of the kingdom and i think that it's referring to the message the preached message of the gospel of the coming kingdom well god bless you great to speak to you and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow have a wonderful day bye for now